Testing, one, two, three. Uh oh. Okay, cool. <laughs> Tell me your name, where you're from, and what you do. Okay, my name is Nicole Bird. From, I don't really know where I'm from. I've lived everywhere, kind of. Where do you live now? I live in Denton, Texas, right now. <laughs> and what, what do I do? I'm a graduate student in what? behavior analysis. And why did you choose that field? Why did I choose that field? Well, first I started out in psychology, and it seemed a little too theoretical. They really like labeled problems, but they didn't solve problems, really. And behavior analysis is a science in which we use, it's a data-driven science, and we go and observe, and we actually change behavior. So in my opinion, it was a better way of making changes versus going, how do you feel? We don't, you know, we know you have feelings, but we don't focus on that. And so what do you ultimately want to do with this? Hmm. <laughs> now that's a million dollar question. Um, a lot of people in my field work with autistic children, MR populations. I kind of want to work with teenagers and teenagers with emotional problems. Right now I work in the education setting in Denton High School and kind of mentor. And I also have a program with dog training but it's really training the kids to train dogs. And we kind of act as mentors and keep them off the streets from four to six. And it's like at-risk children. So that's really cool. So you said you've lived a lot of times somewhere else. Okay, hey, I've lived in Seattle, Washington, Columbia, South Carolina, Waco, Texas, Denton, Texas, Gainesville, Florida, Barberton, Ohio. I know I'm missing somewhere. Oh, Dublin, Georgia. And I think that's it. Yeah. When did you uh, decide on pursuing this field? After I'd gotten out of the military. I just, uh, mainly, my whole thing is positive reinforcement. And um, the government is very coercive. <laughs> and I, the military is super coercive. I spent four years in the military. And I was just thought that there was a better way of getting people to do things without scaring the hell out of them or threatening them with whatever. I guess that's, you know, I always wanted to be interested in human behavior since I was a little kid. And uh, what branch were you in? Navy. Why'd you pick the Navy? Ocean, water. And I also thought, you know, if there's a war, you've always got a bed. There's no desert. There's no, you know, you've got a bed. It's cool. You're on the water. And I just always loved the water. So, I mean, did you spend time on a ship? When I went in. <laughs> Women weren't really on a lot of combat ships and things like that. So you didn't get sea billets as easily. And I ended up on tugboats. So it was on the water. And that's why I lived in Seattle. And it was a really cool experience. It was different. And I was an MP for the other half. So I was completely unsure for that one. Talk about courses. <laughs> right. You know, it's, yeah. I mean, I tried to go with a nicer approach, obviously. But yeah. So you see it and you're like, gosh, there's a better way. There's just a better way. Did you have a hard time as a woman being in the Navy? I had a hard time as a woman being in the military, especially the Navy. I was in about the time the whole tail hook thing was going on. I remember thinking, God, finally, it's getting publicized, just how awful it is. And you're kind of resented. And it's just the contingencies that are there. You have men that are out to sea six, seven months. And then you have all these women that are taking up, and it's not their fault either, it's no one's fault, but they're taking up shore duty billets because they couldn't go to sea. You're eliminated from a lot of sea billets. So these guys have to keep going to sea six months, and they're out six months, they come back, and then they're in maybe a month or two, and then they're back out six months. So they're having to do a little more there, and they can't be home with their wives and children and things like that. But the women, it's not their fault either. But from what I hear, it's changed a lot. I mean, I was in from 89 to 93, 
So it's, it's gotten better, and it's a process. You know, once those contingencies change, everything shifts a little bit. Did you have family members in before you, or what made you go? Uh, my sister was in the Army, and my father was in the Army. I went in because, um, well, my family life kind of sucked. And at 17, it was a great escape. You know, it would, it would give me money for college. I mean, that's why a lot of people go in. It's an escape, it, and it's an accepted escape. You can serve your country, you can get your money for college, you can live on your own, you can have your independence. And most people don't go in thinking that they're going to go to war or anything. Like I was in when Desert Storm started, I was like, oh, <laughs> I thought I was getting money for college. And then it hits you like, okay, that little pledge and stuff that I took meant something. But that's pretty much why I went in. And where did you spend your time during? Seattle. During Puget, Storm, Puget Sound Naval Shipyard. And, you know, it affects the whole military, obviously, but you're not in the war area, but you still have to worry about riots and that kind of stuff. And you're always on port and starboard duty is what they call it. So you're on, off, on, off, on, off, and you're not really off anymore. So it's different. But my husband actually was there. But it was before we had met. We ended up meeting after we both got out of the military. What did he do over there? He was a special operations for the Air Force. He was the helicopter crew chief. And he got to sit in the desert the whole time. <laughs> I told him he should join the Navy. But he, he sat in the desert the whole time. And that was it? I mean, he wasn't really involved in combat duties, or did he end up? Oh, yeah. He also did the Panama thing. But, you know, they don't, he didn't talk about it that much, really. I knew he flew things out, and I saw pictures. And you saw the tanks exploded, and you saw little Iraqi bodies and stuff. So. I know that he saw, and he's on the helicopter, dropping things and doing what they do. But yeah, I don't, <laughs> he doesn't talk about it a lot. It it had a big impact on him. Can you uh, tell me why you came down here today? Down here, Kennedy Museum. Our our in laws are here, so we wanted to bring him here to the Kennedy Museum. So they asked to come here. Or are you? Well, we had been here before, and they had asked to come here too. Good Democrat family. <laughs> so I take it you have a political affiliation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah. Well, I suppose it, that is a really <laughs> intensive question. Why is that? Why do I have a political affiliation or why do I have the one that I do? Oh. <laughs> Okay, why do I have the one that I do? Oh man, I'm in the wrong part of town for that one. <laughs> I'm just very liberal. I like social services doing, not giving away things. Not so much that, but focusing on bettering society as a whole instead of one class, and I kind of see the Republican Party doing that. I'm not so much into defense, even though I served in the military. kind of see the Republican Party being for that. I'm into women's rights, pro-choice, pretty much everything that here doesn't support. <laughs> Environment, better education, and I think that the Democrat Party is a little more towards those things. I'm trying to be diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, they say free speech, and you know everybody says, "Oh yeah, you've got that," but then. Dallas, Texas, not really, no. Mm. What makes you feel that way? Well, like my husband, he's doing public administration. It's just the responses you get from people, the bumper stickers, all the, like Texas. I did this little thing just for fun one day. Texas is a very obnoxious state. I looked at the Texas welcome site and the Florida welcome site, and I counted how many times Texas was, like, there. Or if you watch TV and you just count. How many times, Texas, 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 Texas is big, Texas is great, trucks, Texas, Texas. And it's obnoxious, and I've never seen any other state like it in my life. And like, I've had days where I've just counted this and went, wow, you know, they're really trying to convince me that this place is so great. Why are they trying so hard to convince me of this? But I'm very opinionated. <laughs> and just, I lived here when I was a child in Waco, and I think that's when it had the biggest impression. I had moved from the north, and it just seemed like, it wasn't always verbal, 
sometimes nonverbal behavior. They didn't like Catholics. They didn't like Hispanics. They didn't like they surely didn't like Yankees because it was like Yankee go home, and it just seemed like a state that really fostered a lot of hate not tolerance, not diversity, and those are things that are very important to me. Even though I sound intolerant of the state of Texas. But it's hard if you're of a different view to be submerged somewhere where you can't speak those things really because people will look at you and you're just like, okay, all right. <laughs> I mean, even my husband's like, shut up, shut up. And it's just different out of my fun zone. <laughs> it depends where you are. I think it depends where you are, really. Like Denton is a little more diverse. It's caught two colleges and everything. And I've never been back to Waco, honestly, so I don't know. But mm, I think it's unspoken things and just behaviors that you can't just pinpoint one that is exactly happening at, at any point in time. But it's there and you feel it if you have a different view from the majority. Just the looks and it's there. <laughs> be, be liberal for a day. <laughs> and it's just different. It's very different. But I also came from Florida, which is not super liberal, but in Gainesville, it's very diverse. And it's also a college town, University of Florida. And that's why I went. It was just a very different experience than UNT. Like I remember when I first got here, I was all about helping out with the elections and I wanted to volunteer to do the Democrat thing and they're like oh we don't have one of those and I called the Chamber of Commerce and I'm like what you have two universities how do you not have like a whole party represented how is that and she's like we don't have that and now I know they have to they have to I still don't believe that they don't but just that I was told that it was peculiar to me you find it odd that Texas used to be all Democrats yes <laughs> I do. I really do. Because just hmm, Bush, especially Bush, is my favorite guy. <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> Her face, she's like, what? No, no, I don't like, I don't like that. <laughs> Him in particular? Policies. Or would it just be any Republican over there now? Policies. You know, it's just what they stand for. Not them as individuals. I don't know them as individuals. I just know what they speak that they're for or against, and it counters my beliefs and my views of what should be happening. I, I just, and I also know that I was really a lot happier during the Clinton era. <laughs> Things just seemed a little better for everyone. Can you uh, tell me about the first time you went up to the museum? It? It, wow, I, it, I was somber for days. It's. I thought it was very nice how they had done it, but it just, I really can't verbalize it. It had such an emotional impact, even though I hadn't been alive during the time. The Kennedys and just what I've read about them and their value of the arts and their value for peace and these kind of things, which, and they're idealists, and I love idealists. They just seem like the perfect, <laughs> perfect people to be there. And it was just such a sad thing. And some of the movies they have are just, you're in there and you're just crying. You're like, I wasn't even alive. You know, I can't have too much knowledge of what, what it was like. But it still, it brings the tears. It's very emotional. Is again? Today? Again, yeah. She's thinking, you know, not fully desensitized, yeah. And you'll see the people that are older when you watch them. It's the same thing. And it's kind of neat when you realize that they were there. And you weren't, but still, you're having the same emotional response to this video or to this panel that you're reading. It, it's amazing. I'd, I'd go again. It's just, it's amazing. What did you uh, feel when you walked in the plaza? Hmm. <laughs> sad. I mean, sad. Because you're like, wow, I wish I never came to Dallas. <laughs> and you just wonder what what in the world would be different, if anything. And you'll never know, because obviously it, it didn't happen. But it makes you think, how would things be different? How would I be different? Would, because somehow this impacted me, even though I wasn't born yet, 
it changed the attitude of a nation. So, kind of like uh, the World Trade Center. Clinton era, you were fun, frolicky, things were a little more playful. And then after this tragedy, there's a very somber and serious feeling that across the nation and across the world, and things just change, and it's like an end of an era, end of innocence. And I kind of, that's what I, the only thing I have in my lifetime to really compare it to. And it seems like it would be kind of the same thing. I can't remember the whole question now. <laughs> I hope I answered your question. Um, it, when you first came down to Buick Plaza, was it any different to you than the pictures you've seen? I think I always imagined it bigger. You know, like way bigger. And it's not. So it's a lot smaller than I had imagined. Have you uh, gone over the Kennedy, Kennedy Memorial? Mm-mm, I don't think so. Behind the red courthouse there. Look. <laughs> Probably have. See, I don't know, last time I came, was four years ago, five years ago? So I don't know. Did you ever go to the conspiracy museum? No. You know, I've actually lived here for years, and I don't come to Dallas that often. I just stay in my little bubble. The traffic drives me insane. So. <laughs> I went to the, his, up in um, D.C., I went to the National Museum and went there. I mean, uh, Arlington National Cemetery. I did that, but Dallas, I've only, really, I've done New Orleans more than I've done Dallas, which is kind of sad. But um, did you uh, see the Oliver Stone film? Yes. A long time ago. I I liked it. It was interesting. I can't remember much so long ago. I saw it like when it first came out. Did you give any credence to conspiracy theory? Well, <laughs> Uh, sometimes, you know. I wasn't here, I haven't seen the evidence personally, so. What do you think is possible? What do you think is impossible? Mm, I, th mm, you know, <laughs> I'd have to see the evidence and like, I think that there was more than one shooter. That I think. Just the way that he fell, and just, it just doesn't seem possible. Three, it just doesn't seem possible. Like, my father-in-law and husband are both avid hunters. And they're the same thing, they're like, no way. And they have a better way of explaining it because they, they hunt and they've shot and they don't really buy the nice, clean, little, pretty bullet thing and all that. So they're, I'm kind of conceding to their knowledge about guns and all of that good stuff. But things that I've read, but what you read can shape your, obviously it's going to shape your opinion. I'd have to see evidence. <laughs> Do you think any evidence will ever come forth that would be convincing? I hope. Like I know they said up there that, yes, they're shooter on the grassy knoll, but there's no evidence to support that there's a conspiracy. So that might just mean that the evidence has not yet been put out there, been discovered, maybe the investigation wasn't as clean as they would have liked, maybe they didn't, were so distracted by this that their scene was messed up here, there and about, and they couldn't have gotten all the data or whatever that they needed to make a clear analysis or to get clear evidence. So that's what that could mean. It just wasn't accessible. I would hope that it's out there and I hope that they could because I don't buy just that. The government? No, just people. Or people? Oh, people love a good conspiracy theory. They latch on to that. They love that. <laughs> and a lot of people don't really believe what they've been told anyway. I don't think. People that I've talked to, I can't speak for. All people. <laughs> and since people love conspiracies so much, do you think if one evidence of one particular story emerged, do you think the majority of people would accept that? Story. I don't know. It depends on 
you know what the consequences are for certain people that do accept that. You know what I mean? At a government level, what are the consequences of having that come out now as far as government, as far as workings of the government? It depends what your reinforcers are. <laughs> do you think that the Warren Commission was done in good faith? Hmm. I'd like to think so, but I don't know. <laughs> I shan't comment on that. But um, I'd like to think so. But you don't have all the evidence, so you can't ever make a really solid... I can't. I mean, I have to see evidence. I can't solid. say, yes, they were, you know. I don't know. It doesn't seem so when you hear both sides. But I will neither. <laughs> I, won't go e I won't go either way. Do you have any feelings on uh, Lyndon Johnson? <laughs> well, there's an from Texas, but that's, you know, that's not a good way to judge somebody. I don't know much about Mr. LBJ. I know my parents didn't like him, but I don't know why. So I can't say I don't like you because my parents don't like you. <laughs> so I don't know much about what he's done or any of that good stuff. I know that a lot of the conspiracy theories kind of link him in there. Got to have the evidence. <laughs> I don't, I would really hate to say something like that about a president or about anyone without sufficient evidence. Whether I like them, whether I don't like them, whatever party they are, good, bad, whatever, it doesn't matter, you've got to have evidence. You can't just say, well, you know, I feel really strongly that he was part of this. Somebody's life, that's somebody's career, got to have evidence. I hope he wasn't. I mean, I really hope that he wasn't. Got to have data, though. <laughs> uh, did you say before what you thought the world would have been like if Kennedy had met his end? I don't know. I mean, that's, that's another thing it's hard to say because it'll never be. You know, I like to think that it'd be a better place. I subscribe to a lot of their philosophies as far as arts, education, and that sort of thing. But you'll never know. So I don't think about it too much. It makes me very sad. I mean, I would hope that it would be better. But I don't know. I mean, I wasn't alive when he was there anyway. I know my parents loved him. I know. Mo and my parents are Democrats, so I'm going to meet a lot of people that loved them. Oh, you were, before we started, you were talking about the uh, vendors out on the street. Can you tell me about your experiences <laughs> well, They're just trying to make a living. I mean, they give you the... Instead, well, this is smart on their part, too. I mean, it is. They give you the brochure before they tell you that you have to pay for it, like what other people do with free pamphlets when they're handing them out. So you take it, and then they give you the price. But that's, that's smart for them. I mean, they're trying to make their living. Spending any time listening to their spiel? No, I didn't. Well, I bought, like, last time I was down here, and I forget. I'm so bad remembering names. I barely remember my own. Um, a, we bought a book, two books, actually. And they're very expensive books. And we had them signed and never really had a chance to read them. I mean, you're in graduate school. I don't know if you always have 50 million things to read that you never get to read the fun stuff. Like, I have all these books. I mean, my stuff is fun, don't get me wrong. But there are times when I'd like to read other things. But I'm so busy with school that it's school stuff. And then all the other books just kind of pile up. And then when I graduate, I think I'm just going to hide for about six months and read. I cannot remember the guy's name, the author. I mean, I have him signed. Yeah, he was signed at Obama. Mm hmm. Just on the corner. God, I want to say he was, yeah, I, the grassy knoll, actually. <laughs> I want to say that he was one of the photographers, but I don't know how accurate that is. I have the books in the car because I give them to my in laws to read to kind of, before they went up there, kind of get them in the mood. How uh, trustworthy do you think these vendors are? I don't know as in trustworthy for their information? 
Well, I think they say what they're paid to say. You know? I mean, some of them... I don't know, that guy looks old enough, maybe. But... I wouldn't date a... <laughs> you have to show me proof. I think that they're probably saying whatever will sell the magazine that will get them paid so they can eat, so they can have a life like everyone else. I mean, I think it's probably biased. I don't think they sat down and said, okay, let's research this. Oh, let's check out, you know, the pros, cons here. I doubt that they did that, but I don't, I don't blame them. They're out there making their living. Now I'm scared that I've done this. Why? <laughs> Why are you scared? Oh. I don't like being on tape, that's why. <laughs> why well, are you not going to be on for much longer? So. <laughs> uh, just to finish it off, do you have any idea who George Bannerman Dealey is? Did the Dealey Square? <laughs> no, I probably read the thing out there. Is there a thing on him out there? I would hope. There? Yes. But I didn't stop to read that one. Because <laughs> we're always in a hurry for everything we do. Like, it's amazing that I'm sitting here doing this. Because I know my husband is fuming right now that I'm doing this. And I was like, he's a graduate student. This is this man. Well, I do appreciate it. So, <laughs> I will uh, let you get out of here. Unless there's something else that you're just burning to say. I think I've voiced enough radical opinions for one day. <laughs> Thank you.